Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. Today's episode, we are going to talk about the Blade Singer Wizard. If you like what we do here, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to read them and see the kind of great things you guys did, the builds you did, and how awesome your DMs were when allowing you to play these kinds of characters. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to get into a little bit about what the Blade Singer is. A blade singer has a very cool background to it. It originally was designed strictly to be an elf specific class. So if you weren't an elf, you couldn't play it. I really like that idea because it encompasses really the what the high elf really was. It's it's very elegant and powerful and something specific to the elven beauty that only they could do. And it, it really fits that mentality. And it's very easy to be an evil, noble, snooty, I'm above everyone else kind of elf. And the high elf really gives you a lot of availability to do that. Um, that being said, this class is a gish. If you're not familiar with that term, or if you've seen it around and don't really know what it means, it means it's a it's a character class that really does a little bit of everything. It does melee fighting, it does um, magic casting, spells, whatever you want. Paladins, rangers are the base gish, where hex blades, swords bards, valor bards, uh, and blade singers really kind of fit in this still a gish class, but a little bit more specialized into other things. It's very cool. It's a lot of risk versus reward, and it really incorporates. A very good thing which I really encourage people to do constantly and it's analyze your spell list those are things that are very important especially with these kinds of characters because it really defines what your character does so incorporating your spell list and the real study of your spells is really important to every wizard first off uh, because you gain so many spells per level and you can constantly learn spells throughout the game, it's important to really design spells that fit your character build. Uh, one of the things I'm going to mention a lot is Flaming Sphere. I think it works really well thematically. There's a great feeling I get from it and a great image in my head whenever um, I'm thinking about a Blade Singer or seeing one in play or things that I think people should do more often. Uh, so incorporate your spells, really look at your character, really look at the spell list, and really look at things that you can do to incorporate them both to really make your character very unique. Uh, if you think about spells like an old school RPG where you had um, a couple of spells and that's what they were, like you had X amount of spells, they all did certain things, they all built around the same theme. Like if you ever played Chrono Trigger and you had... Um, Luca and she was all fire spells like it made sense that there was a progression of fire spells there and it kept to this sort of theme now again you're not a sorcerer or a draconic bloodlight sorcerer so you want to deviate a little bit but understand what that does for your character uh, and really don't be afraid to incorporate things like that that work really really well to build yourself up you're a wizard pick up things that buff you up it's a good idea something to compensate for your low HP and really work on where your strengths are and don't forget that you are a wizard first and then you are a blade singer so do not constantly rush in to do things that you think you're ready to do because you have to respect the base class before you jump into anything else that you want to do in order to play it correctly because you're not forgetting one of them you're not you're not becoming something else you still have those things that are very important to you when you pick this subclass at second level, you gain two abilities. The first of which we're going to discuss is training in war and song. When you adopt this tradition at second level, you gain proficiency with light armor and you gain proficiency with one type of one-handed melee weapon of your choice. You also gain proficiency in the performance skill if you don't already have it. Understand that this is really so you can pick a weapon that you can use. Dexterity is going to be your best stat because strength is really not going to help you as much as dex will. Simply because initiative count and armor class. It's too beneficial for you to waste that and pick strength uh, when you can gain those things and make yourself a little bit more viable. This is part of the reason why it makes the most sense originally for elves to do it. All elves got certain... Uh, weapon proficiencies that they started with and so you pick this one up and you can pick the rapier you can pick the whip you can pick whatever you want uh, and incorporate that way 
Uh, it gives you a couple of different styles of fighting, depending on what kind of weapon you would like to choose. A little bit really for flavor text, but it doesn't really actively do anything uh, in combat or in the actual game that it really needs to be worried about. But it's a great way to really flesh out your character and understand what Training in War and Song and Blade Song actually do. So, a lot of people will pick the Rapier right off the bat. Great, awesome. Light armor, throwing it on is great. The best thing about this is it saves your spell slots early on. You get If you can access studded leather really quickly or anything, it's a benefit for you. When you get higher levels, your first level will be for mage armor. It's a great way to communicate, a great way really to communicate what your character is. You're a magical fighter when you use Blade Song. You're a magical melee blade dancer. It's important to incorporate those things. So having magical armor really makes a lot more sense but the spell slots at second level are too valuable to be used in that way when they can be used in a plethora of more important ways that can save lives or end encounters at this level when you get higher level it's a great way to use those first level spell slots and not feel like they're just dead weight to you uh, again this is why i also mentioned flaming sphere because if you don't have a concentration thing going up it's a great way to use that regularly throughout combat to keep it up and keep using those lower level spell slots even when you're up because it's going to add a little bit of extra damage to you per round and when you need something heavy you have it as opposed to burning through them regularly sorry spells are just some of those things that you really need to go in depth with because if you miss out on the spells and you just focus on the abilities you really lose focus of the full scope of what your character can be the other ability you get at second level is Blade Song. This is really what makes you a Blade Singer. You could invoke an elven magic called the Blade Song, provided you aren't wearing medium or heavy armor or using a shield. It graces you with supernatural speed, agility, and focus. You can use a bonus action to start Blade Song, which lasts for one minute. It ends early if you're incapacitated, if you don medium or heavy armor or shield, or if you use two hands to make an attack with a weapon. You can also dismiss the blade song at any time, no action required. While your blade song is active, you gain the following benefits. You gain a bonus to your AC equal to your intelligence modifier. Your walking speed increases by 10 feet, and you have advantage on dexterity acrobatics checks. You gain a bonus to any constitution saving throw you make to maintain your concentration on a spell, and that bonus equals your intelligence modifier. And you can use this ability a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get it all back when you finish a long rest. It's really easy to see why this is a great ability. Your AC goes up, so right when you use it, that's when you go into melee. Awesome, fantastic. You figure when you first get it at level 2, you should have a plus 3 to intelligence. So say you did just happen to have uh, armor around and a plus 2 to dexterity. You're looking at what? Even if you don't have any armor whatsoever, you're looking at 15 armor. If you throw on mage armor, you're looking at 18. It's great. It's a huge boost. And especially early on, that makes a difference. Um, your increase in walking speed, 10 feet. Great, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, very rarely do I feel like you're in a situation where you need a race or you need to beat uh, someone a distance, but if you're trying to escape from somebody, that will make a very big difference to you. Uh, advantages on dexterity, acrobatics checks, kind of niche, kind of really comes along with what you're trying to do. Uh, if you were performing something and you needed to tumble or do something or you do need to jump and grab onto something very heroically, it's there. Um, what's really great is this importance to constitution saving throws when you're maintaining a concentration spell. Your intelligence modifier plus your whatever your con modifier is, is a big deal. You're a wizard. You should always have a spell of concentration going on. You should set that up first. This is really why I keep mentioning Flaming Sphere. You set it up and you keep it going throughout your combat for that minute of time you're in Blade Song. So you can make your attacks and you can keep this thing going backwards and forwards and doing additional damage. And it's a great way to use what you can really see a Blade Singer being. 
you can see someone fighting with a sword or whatever, and their other hand, they're manipulating the spell to go around and bash into other things and cause damage to the players, to the enemies. Not, I mean, obviously, you don't want to damage your players, but to the enemies um, that you're fighting. And it's thematically, it's cool. Uh, it, it's a great, It's it seems very elegant, and it's this cool little ball of fire that's just bouncing around the field, and it's being disruptive. It's causing not only the person that you're fighting to run the risk of getting hit with that ball, um, it's also other enemies on the field that you wouldn't normally be able to reach because you're caught in melee with this character, or, or you don't want to use your action to retreat and uh, um, disengage. So... It works really well. Incorporate things like that. I use this as an example because I think an extra 2d6 on top of your regular attack is going to be pretty well worth it constantly. Um, when you hit higher levels, it's not going to seem like much. But if you're not using a spell and you're just beating down regular enemies, it's a great way to conserve spells and do a little bit more damage and really save some of your damaging dealing uh, spells later on. Uh, because you really don't want to end up in a scenario where you drop a huge spell and now you're just down that huge spell and you didn't realize there were tougher enemies later on and it would have been more beneficial there. Uh, again, it's a tactic thing. It, it kind of bases around what your character does and how you play uh, your character. But I love the idea of having something movable around in combat that's magic focused that really helps to bring that I'm constantly a wizard first and a fighter second. And and that really brings that to the forefront. And I really feel great about the idea, the imagery, and how it works in combat. At sixth level, you gain access to extra attack. This is a little bit different than every other extra attack that you can gain access to. Uh, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn. Moreover, you can cast one of your cantrips in place of one of those attacks. Here's what's great. You don't need Bladesong to be active to use this. You can use it throughout the entire campaign whenever you take the attack action. So really weigh the weight of what you're doing. In combat, pretty simple. Attack, booming blade, green flame blade, whatever it is you're doing. Or say you attack and you kill something on that first hit. Firebolt something further down the line. It's a wonderful opportunity to be very, very creative. Obviously, Green Flame Blade and a regular attack or Booming Blade and a regular attack is really going to be a very, very strong hit for you. Uh, it's, it's so great. Um, and the higher level you get, the more it does. And it's just, it's such a big damage boost. It seems cool. It's great. You can really build yourself a couple of creative ways. This does not consume your bonus action. So if you somehow ended up with something like Crossbow Expert, you can hand crossbow, firebolt, hand crossbow. Like it's doable. You can do creative things like that, but understand that where you are in, in your action economy is going to affect how you use this. If you attack someone and kill them and there's nobody else really feasible close to you and you don't have Blade Song active and you don't really want to use an attack cantrip, maybe you can distract somebody. Maybe you can um, defend yourself with Blade Ward. Maybe you can uh, use Minor Illusion, make a screech sound, come from a dark abyss or something like that, or a shadowy area and alert someone maybe that something's happening over there and distract them. Uh, you can play around with the scenarios depending on what you're doing and how creative you are because as a wizard you have access to a lot of great cantrips and cantrips get underlooked a lot but there's a lot of great things you can do with them. So don't be so locked into just constantly doing damage. You have other things and again if you have your bonus action a concentration spell already up you don't necessarily have to worry about doing damage. You can have that doing whatever it was, disabling, fearing, crowd controlling, capturing, damaging, burning, whatever. As long as it's active and you have these extra attacks, you can really give yourself availability to optimize your action economy into doing things that are greater than just one thing, than just damage. You can do other things that can be very beneficial to other people and just very cool because you're really opening up as a wizard. Like your options are growing. So this is clearly one of those things where if you're an actually intelligent person, there's a lot of great things you can do. 
a lot of optimizers love this class because of the great flexibility you have with it. Take this opportunity to really, again, go through all of your cantrips and read what they do and see what happens with them. And don't be so limited to just Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade. You can use um, anything that does AoE, Spectral Dagger, and hit everything around you. You can do a lot of other things that are damage doing that are cool. So, again, study your spell list and take the time to really get to know what your options are. At 10th level, you gain access to Song of Defense. This really really is a very cool ability. Um, it's a very interesting way to see this as what a wizard can really do uh, with real great control and knowledge of magic and spells. What you can accomplish is just awesome. Uh, and this is really a great defensive feature that really fits so well with the wizard. Um, so the way it's worded is you can direct your magic to absorb damage while your blade song is active. When you take damage, you can use a reaction to expend one spell slot and reduce that damage to you by an amount equal to five times the spell slot's level. Just wild. Um, here's a great thing about it. Your lower level spell slots will probably be consumed by this a lot. Um, unless you have war cast there, you're not really using your reaction for much, uh, unless you specifically are using the shield spell or things like that. If you're in a situation where you get hit and the shield spell will not help you, which is pretty surprising because at 10th level and your blade song is active, you're probably pretty high in that AC. Uh, but those events still occur. This is a great way to reduce that damage. And if you, the more spell slots you have, and the way your games are set up, and knowing your dungeon master is set up, is a great way to judge how to use this. If you do X amount of combats a day, and you don't really get a lot of short rests, then maybe it's great to burn some of these early and reduce the early damage you take, making you a little bit more viable later on. Or when you're at a fight where you know after this it's going to be over, you can consume a lot of spell slots and make sure you survive a lot of things. Um, it's great defensively. The imagery of a something going to hit you and then you just like focusing your magic just to create this barrier and it just gets crushed against the barrier and nothing happens to you and you're able to endure the hit. It's like an anime. You know what I mean? Like it's like... It's like Hunter x Hunter, where they just they just use Nen and create a shield. Like It's great. It feels cool. And it's a great way to use your spell slots as another type of resource, as a damage reduction resource that you can do a lot of great things with. It makes you very survivable, and it really compensates for you having a D6 HP, because it really gives you the availability to go really full on into combat, where you're doing a lot with your regular attack. You're doing a lot with your cantrips. It makes you feel more confident in what you're doing and more safe in what you're doing and in a very, very way that's very fitting of the wizard because it took you time to get here. It took you a lot of intelligence and magic to get to this point and now you're using it to increase your survivability. And it's great how it works together and you feel like you really just read this out of a book and started like bringing it up and growing as you became a better blade singer. At 14th level, you gain access to the final Blade Singer ability, Song of Victory. Uh, this lets you add your intelligence modifier to the damage of your melee weapon attacks while your Blade Song is active. This is just like the Eldritch Invocation Life Drinker, which of course comes from the Warlock, and you do need to be at level 12 in order to get. Uh, what's great about this is it really bumps up your damage. Uh, at this point, you have plus five to intelligence, or you at least should. Your dexterity, depending on where you are, or how you did your build, or what things you took, or maybe what magic items you had, you could be at a plus four, or a you know getting close to there, or maybe even you went nuts and put I got to a plus five there. So that's ten. Uh, you're adding that damage onto your regular melee attacks. Uh, you're adding that onto your Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade, which is going to wildly increase their damage output. 
understand the restriction is it has to be a melee weapon attack while your blade song is active it is a huge bump to your offense because of the amount of attacks you'll be doing and at this point your proficiency bonus is pretty high so you can use blade song a little bit more regularly it's a great way to keep damage going it keeps you at pace with some of the other melee fighters uh, especially at this point when some of them are attacking three times or rages really more frequently or you're fighting hexblade uh or, or a hunter with hunter's mark i mean a ranger with hunter's mark it's a great way to keep you up it's a great way to keep things going and keeping your damage on par your cantrips are really going to put you over the edge with this so really understand what that means to you and how great this is to just balance you out and make sure you're not dragging too far behind and keeping you on point with where you are. Again, this is a great melee weapon buff, but if you negate your spells, if you negate using Booming Blade, if you negate using Green Flame Blade and you just keep attacking, you're not getting the full effect of what this can really do and your damage output is not going to be where it should be. Uh, I'm not an optimizer, uh, that's just pretty straightforward, uh, and you don't really need to break the, you know, the, out the charts and the math to know that that's how it really should be working. But really, it's a buff, it's great, 14th level, most campaigns are, if you're not already over by 10 or 11, this is usually probably where you're going to be finishing off, and you get it at that perfect point where it's a big jump where you get it, and it'll sustain you throughout the rest of the game. Again. You're a wizard first, so don't ever negate what you can do with spells for something like Song of Victory. It's great, it's awesome, it's an awesome buff. If you burn through all your spells and you're really just down to Blade Song, this will really help you burn through and feel good and feel great about what you're doing and not feel like it's a last resort. Feel like this is my secret weapon, you know? Like, I, like this is my trump card that I've been holding onto for a long time. Our final thoughts, the Blade Singing Wizard is an incredible Gish character. I love these characters. I often play Warlocks and usually I go Hexblade or I get Pact of the Blade. Anyway, uh, even if it's not optimal, I just love hitting things and then casting spells. This really fits in that line and it really makes this feel very unique. Uh, yeah, the stats are a little all over the place, but if you were to play... Uh, and you couldn't use the Tasha's uh, ability uh, score switcheroo, uh, I would say really just go with the, with the high elf. Keep your dexterity at 14, so that plus 2 will bump it up to a 16. Dump everything else to get that intelligence at 16, and fill everything else in where you can to make things as best as possible. And understand that having a 3 dexterity for most of the game is still pretty good. Um, if you get it to four, I would leave it at four up until I got everything else I wanted, like maxing out my intelligence first, then bump it up to four, then put some into con, maybe wherever the ability score increases are left, then go from there. Really work with trying to see what you can do, because if you get a plus one rapier, that's going to make a big difference. That's going to make it a plus, you know, a plus five to, to hit and extra damage. Again, when you get higher levels, your intelligence is going to compensate for that. So there's a lot of ways to really get around having to need to dump all your points into dexterity or being worried about using enough points into it. Uh, as a wizard, your spell list is incredible. There's lots of things you can do to boost yourself up, to compensate where you're lacking. All you have to really do is take the time out and read the spells. Read all the spells it's important to know what rituals you can use because you want them no matter what because they're beneficial like identify and find traps things like that that being said knowing how to build your character knowing how you want your character to be seen especially in combat for a blade singer you want blade song to be something very very like elegant and very like enriching and feeling great and making yourself feel like this incredibly beautiful entity that's just about to decimate everything and i feel that really works with flaming sphere because of what you can do it feels like it keeps you mobile and gives you the availability to do other things look through your spell list if you gain access to things like spiritual weapons somehow um that is incredible to you that is a great way to use that spell or anything that you can maneuver around the battlefield that can keep things going you know like you want 
I feel like having high mobility is awesome because you're not supposed to be like tied down. You're not supposed to be running around. That's what like with a shield just staying in combat and just swinging. That's why you can't equip one. That's why it's important for you to not two hand weapons because you have to have that other weapon available to use spells and use magic and use components and keep those spells going because you are a wizard first. This is a compliment to what a spellcaster should be. It's a great option. It's very minimized in when you should do it. But as a wizard, everything kind of has to feel that way. Everything has to have like its own perfect spot. And this is what it's for. This is utility. This is defensive. This is offensive. This is everything. This is, you know, performance. This is social. This is whatever. That's what a wizard is. Everything is very intellectually designed to fulfill a role and you lose that if you don't spend the time doing the homework really a wizard is very sucky like that because they have a huge spell list and all the spells do a great variety of things and you can find almost anything there uh so you really got to take the time out to do that now you want to throw evard's black tentacles down and just keep dancing on the outskirts of it in case anybody comes out and just fight your way and keep them barred there that is is cool that definitely changes the imagery of what your wizard is and it has that feel to it your spells should always say something about your character if you're a role player first they should be intrinsic as to who you are that's why if you cast the same ones over and over again it shouldn't feel so barring as when you are an optimizer and you cast the same spells over and over again as an optimizer you're doing them specifically for the highest possible outcome of whatever numbers you're trying to reach the role player first the spells you cast should reflect on who your character is because the way magic works is best described as casting out a net into an ocean and just seeing what pulls out in theory it should be reflective on who you are because you're throwing the net because you are the net so you should be able to gravitate and grab things that are closest that resemble what and who you are really build your character like that and you will be so satisfied and the wizard gives you the best opportunity to build a character around that uh, that being said we're going to take this video to a close uh thank you so much for sticking this far uh we love 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 to hear what you guys have to say please keep commenting please keep liking sharing and subscribing uh it's such a joy to be able to do this and um we just hit 400 recently and it's a very big thing for me because i love the number four and uh breaking into that makes me feel great and and appreciated so thank you all so so much thank you all to all the people who helped get us here to this point all those people who didn't know us who shared us all those people on twitter and facebook and and instagram who just saw us liked us shared us and people that saw us on youtube and and talked about us and shared our videos thank you all so so much it's it's incredible and um, we're so grateful that you gave us spooky kid a chance <laughs>